Medical experimentation has a long and troubling history in the United States, especially when it comes to people of color. From the Tuskegee syphilis experiment to the exploitation of Henrietta Lacks, communities of color have been used for scientific research without their consent, often leading to devastating consequences. The use of vulnerable populations in scientific research has been a common practice since the inception of modern medicine. However, it is the discriminatory practices and unethical behavior that sets apart the examples of medical experimentation involving people of color. These events have had a profound impact on the trust between minority communities and the medical profession, contributing to the development of health disparities and further marginalization. One of the most infamous examples of medical experimentation on African Americans is the Tuskegee syphilis experiment. In 1932, the U.S. Public Health Service launched a study in which it wrongly told 399 black men with syphilis that they were receiving free health care. In reality, the study aimed to observe the progression of the disease without treating the patients, even after effective treatments became available. The researchers continued this unethical and racially biased study for 40 years, even though penicillin had become the standard treatment for syphilis since the 1940s. The Tuskegee study was a clear example of ethical misconduct, as the researchers neglected to obtain informed consent from the participants, knowing that they were not receiving treatment for a curable disease. The study was also biased in terms of race and class, as the researchers specifically recruited low-income black men from Macon County, Alabama. This experiment led to unimaginable harm to the participants, causing disabilities and death among them and their partners and children. The Tuskegee study led to significant changes in research policies in terms of informed consent, monitoring of research projects, and ethical considerations involving vulnerable populations, especially people of color. However, racial disparities and lack of access to healthcare continued to be a problem. Another example of medical experimentation on people of color involves the exploitation of Henrietta Lacks, a black woman who died of cervical cancer in 1951, whose cancer cells were obtained without informed consent or compensation by scientists at Johns Hopkins Hospital. Henrietta Lacks cells were unique, and they continued to multiply in culture and aided in the development of numerous medical advancements, including the polio vaccine, cancer treatments, and genetic research. Despite the significant contribution of her cells to medical research, her family was unaware of it and did not receive any benefits from the commercialization of her unique cells. This exploitation of Henrietta Lacks and her family highlights the ongoing issue of exploitation and racism in medical research concerning people of color. It demonstrates how progress in medical sciences often dehumanizes its vulnerable populations and disregards their foundational right to dignity and recognition. Medical experimentation can further reflect a broad spectrum of medical racism that includes both blatant disregard for informed consent, ethical obligations, and more insidious methods of testing and research by racially based beliefs or racial hygiene programs that discriminate against people of different races or ethnicities bodily autonomy. Another example of medical experimentation on people of color is the use of Puerto Ricans as subjects for contraceptive trials in the 1950s and 1960s. Women in Puerto Rican communities did not always receive informed consent, and they also faced language barriers and limited access to medical care because of their marginalized status within the U.S. This exploitation of Puerto Ricans in scientific research mirrors the obliviousness with which subjects of medical research often treated outside of mainstream cultures and populations. There are many other examples of medical experimentation on people of color, including the eugenics movement, forced sterilization, and drug trials. In each case, people of color have been used as test subjects without the protection of ethical practices, but rather as convenient and disposable objects for scientists to kickstart their investigations on. Medical experimentation has a long and fraught history, and while significant strides have been made to address ethical concerns surrounding policies, it remains a fact that the damage caused by these experiments has led to health inequities persisting and racial disparities in healthcare today. Moreover, 
The historical context of medical experimentation highlights that scientific investigations are not morally neutral but can perpetuate or reinforce the status quo. In the case of people of color, these scientific practices have reflected anti-black and anti-indigenous sentiments and are rooted in wider systems of racism and discrimination that have continued to this day. It is clear that there is an urgent need for greater ethical accountability when it comes to medical experimentation, especially for vulnerable populations of color. Such accountability means creating inclusive research processes, removing biases in research design and authorship, and ensuring equity in the distribution of the benefits generated by medical research. There is also a need to prioritize the voices and experiences of underrepresented groups in medicine and in scientific advancement. Minorities should no longer be used as mere observers of medical research but should be incorporated into conversations and decision-making from the outset, centering their needs and experiences moving forward. In conclusion, the history of medical experimentation on people of color is a harrowing example of the structural biases and injustices present in our society. These actions that have targeted minorities were not only wrongful at the time they were carried out but continue to have far-reaching impacts on the health, rights, and dignity of people of color today. We must take these examples as lessons learned and make a commitment to ensure medical research is conducted in a respectful, ethical, and inclusive manner that protects vulnerable populations of color for the progress of human knowledge and well-being.